started. So today's webinar is Let Out Your Creativity or Let Your Creativity Out uh, with Sherry. She's a publisher, editor, speaker, author, and business consultant uh, with Insightful Communications Publishing and Woman for Woman Canada. So who is Sherry? Uh, Sherry? Enjoy Sherry's fresh approach as she shares excellent info and tools that you will be able to incorporate immediately. Above all, Sherry will inspire you. And uh, I know she's done past webinars uh, where she definitely is very inspiring, so I hope you enjoy today, uh, to become even more committed to yourself and your work, reminding you of the value of ongoing learning and the dedication of time and patience required to bring about meaningful success and the importance of surrounding yourself with people who care about, the work, your, about your work as much as you do. Sherry, welcome. Thank you very much, and welcome to everyone to this webinar, Let Your Creativity Out. Uh, we're definitely going to be talking about learning how to be creative, and I would like to underscore that perhaps the emphasis will be helping you to find where you are creative already. Uh, we're going to discuss how to foster new ideas regularly. We're going to prioritize those ideas to use now and later. And of course, uh, take action to stay ahead of the curve and competition. I have a great question for you, and I really want you to keep this at the forefront. What other words describe to you someone who is creative? I've listed a few here, inspired, imaginative, artistic, inventive, resourceful, solution-focused, ingenious, innovative, and I wonder if you can relate to any of these qualities. I encourage you to connect with what fits for you and use it to empower yourself and tap into the endless possibilities and great outcomes that only you can. Most of us are much more creative than we think we are. And I have a feeling that most of you are actually shaking your heads at this point. Um, I encourage you to reflect on a time or times when you came up with a great idea or solution. We don't stop long enough in our days uh, to create new outcomes for ourselves by thinking about the successes that we've had in the past that we can call on. Um, a, a great tool is to actually notice how you did that. What was your process? Being creative doesn't have to do with just writing or art forms. It surfaces every single day in our work and in our life where we are creating solutions and next steps all the time. Decide how useful it would be for you to feel and be more creative. And practice catching yourself being creative every single day, again, in your personal lives and in your business. Don't negate ideas before you've had a chance to flush them out. And it's really helpful to keep an ideas book or journal and write in it regularly. This is one of my favorite slides and uh, topics. Foster new ideas regularly. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term idea bubbles. There are so many different ways that you can develop ideas. There's uh, making lists, pros and cons, and things like this, but this is really cool. So let me share with you. Idea bubbles help you develop and evaluate concepts and solutions. For the bigger projects you're working on, consider creating a visual of your goal or your need or idea that you want to build on. Put it in the middle or bottom of your screen or paper. And I actually find that handwriting is the best way to go here. That's a personal choice really, uh, but I do want to mention that from a creative standpoint. From the main idea, you'll create small and bigger idea bubbles that connect to your main goal. And as you'll see in the next slide, the ideas really do start to build. So for example, I want to write a book. Well, what kind of book do I want to write? What do I need to know in order to take the next steps? What do I need to do to take the next steps? How do I market the book? And what does all that look like? I use this concept for creating webinar content like today, workshops, project management, article and blog writing, short stories, and books, and more. And it's really useful. As you work through this process using the idea bubble concept, lists, or whatever helps you get it out of your head and onto paper, you will find that it brings about a lot of clarity for you. 
you will start to see how some of your ideas and thoughts that have surfaced will be taking you closer to the solution you are seeking. Some you will recognize quickly that they won't apply in this particular scenario. That's fine. In this case, you would simply discard or revisit it later. This is a special note to my business friends and colleagues, entrepreneurs, small business owners, corporate. It's critical to work on your business not just in your business regularly. I know you've heard it before, but it is worth repeating. Uh, how can you uh, support this creative process further beyond some of the individual things that you can do that we're talking about today? Consider joining a mastermind group of like-minded individuals. Work with a coach or consultant that can offer you an unbiased perspective and additional guidance based on their experience and training. Now we're moving on to the next component of the uh, webinar, and that is once you've got the ideas, what do we do with them? This, this next slide is about prioritizing your ideas to use now and later. So once you have your thoughts and ideas down on paper, here are some steps you can take to help you get the best idea and or solution. Of course, cross out the ones you know right away don't fit. Conversely, Highlight the ones that are keepers. I find highlighting very helpful, including in my day timer. And this is tried and true. Make a list of pros and cons. For those concepts you would like to use or revisit later, highlight them in a different color. Better yet, put them on a new page or a new document in your computer for future reference. If you know exactly where you want to use them and when, make an extra note in your day timer. So that thought, that idea, that process won't get lost. Now this is probably almost the most single, most important thing that I'll share with you about prioritizing ideas and finding the absolute best one. And that is consider the ripple effect of implementing this particular idea or solution you've arrived at, taking into consideration the bigger picture and effect. This includes the obvious, time and costs, as well as those involved, even any resistance you might receive and why. If the resistance is a non-issue for you, and I say that in a positive light, not a disrespectful light by any means, or perhaps better yet, that, that resistance is solvable, then you can move forward with confidence. Again, this is a process that very few people entertain and go through fully, and I have found it to be one of the most important steps in the sustainability and success of a concept or idea. Now we want to take action, and we want to stay ahead of the curve and competition. Well, too many people just think about great ideas and solutions in their head, and they don't act on them. It doesn't take much to stay ahead of the curve and create meaningful success in your life if you are willing to act. So simply be willing. Set yourself up for success by writing your action steps down where you can visibly refer to them daily. how to do that. Schedule your action steps in your day timer. Some of these things sound really obvious, but they're so important to review because in our busy days, we do get a little sidetracked at the best of times. So again, schedule your action steps in your day timer, just like you would any other appointment or task. When you schedule it and allow the appropriate amount of time, you're more likely to take action and stay the course. It is also uh, helpful to note the benefit of taking action, attaching it to what is most meaningful to you, your family, and or your clients with respect to you doing what you say you want to do and are going to do. And then check in with yourself regularly. Monthly is good. That's why uh, either working with someone else, either a coach, consultant, partner, buddy, or and or a mastermind uh, group is very helpful. Allow yourself to notice the progress you have made, the actions you have taken, and the learning you have gained. I, I would like to add to that piece that 
if you don't take time for these things, even though many people say, I don't have time to do these, these extra pieces and, and think through all um, the processes and acknowledge my uh, progress, if you don't do that, you'll continue spinning your wheels if you've ever felt that before, and you will not change the habits that you really want to change. So I do want to emphasize that piece and schedule that time in for you. It takes 21 days to form a habit, good or bad. So do it for 21 days and, and see what comes of it. And I can assure you, you will see results um, that will be very sustainable, very fruitful, very satisfying to you that you, you will want to continue those habits. So let's go to the next slide and do a recap. First of all, our, our webinar, of course, the focus was let your creativity out. So it was really about finding it, right? By recognizing what creativity is in you and tap into the endless possibilities and outcomes that only you can. And foster new ideas regularly by using the ideas bubble method or whatever helps you recognize and explore your options. Connect with others who have developed and or tapping into their own creativity and can help you do the same. And prioritize ideas to use now and later, considering the ripple effect. And above all, take action. Have the courage to be less than perfect. Don't hold yourself back. Take what you learn, take your resources, and make the best decisions possible. Be courageous and move forward. You will learn and grow and learn and grow and achieve as a result of taking those steps. All right. Well, we've wrapped up actually the formal part of the webinar much earlier um, in the time frame that we have. We've taken about 15 minutes to do the webinar. Um, I've listed some of my uh, social media uh, links here for you as well as my blog. And uh, Carla, if you're good to go to questions, um, I'm certainly happy to do that and personalize the balance of our time together. Okay, perfect. I'm going to actually start with a few questions of my own and then sure. we'll get into everybody else out there. Um, my first question is going to be around brainstorming. Um, we talked about the ideas book, which I thought was really great because it's kind of funny to me that that's actually how we came up with Marketing Solver was the ideas book. Mm -hmm. um, about a decade ago or even more than a decade, it'll be about 15 years ago now, um, we started actually writing down different marketing ideas and concepts that we had seen, and that's what created Marketing Solver. So now we have 300 marketing tips in there because of every time we saw something, we wrote it down. Right. So I like that. Um, the other one is that you talked about the bubble side. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to kind of add to that and um, see if there's other techniques that you know of. Um, one that I use quite a bit is mind mapping, which seems pretty similar to the bubble approach where you basically put one word in the middle of the page and then find all the connections to it. So the way that um, I do that one is that in the middle of the page we put something like maybe your, who your target market is or whoever your customer is. Right. And if you want to figure out how to deliver a better service or product for them, then we actually put around that bubble, I guess it's kind of the same, mind map, we put around it all the things that the customer is actually needing or looking for or hoping for from working with you. Um, so that's how we use mind mapping. Are there any other techniques that might be able to help our audience? Um, do you know what? I would say, and, and, and it's interesting, uh, my intention was for the, uh, the formal part of the webinar to, to go a little longer, but things happen for a reason. And I think that one of the things that I would um, emphasize to people listening in is to experiment with their own style and their own creativity. I think sometimes people too quickly put themselves in a box that you only do it this way, you only do it this way, whether it's creativity, organization, or what have you. And that's why I also think that it's really important to certainly get tips and information from uh, products like you're delivering through Small Business Solver and the webinar, Let Your Creativity Out. Um, but I would definitely say explore. And as you say, mind, mind mapping, doing pros and cons, 
brainstorming, idea bubbles. It's all very, very similar. I think perhaps the one thing that I would add uh, as I recap that is what your focus is. You have to have a very open mind when you are uh, brainstorming. And, and, and as I mentioned within the webinar, um, you really have to have a mindset of, of, of solution-focused um, uh, thoughts. If you don't, you will hold yourself back from the ideas and creative solutions and, and uh, what have you that can come forth. Um, I think that when certain ideas do come to you, you have to be, I would say, quick not to rule it out. You have to put it down. And eventually you might still rule that out, but in, it, sometimes that is a stepping stone that takes you to another idea. Okay. No, oh, good. Um, and so you were talking about staying open, mm -hmm. and I guess that's sometimes a challenge. I mean, especially as an entrepreneur, and we're doing one task after another, and sometimes we feel like we're getting buried into our business, and we can't really see the forest for the trees type of thing. How do you stay open-minded? I mean, my own personal way is that I actually jog when I brainstorm or have to be creative, or I even sit in a park, or I might even get my nails done and I make sure I don't have to do any work and I just am crea uh, being creative. Um, I use a big piece of paper and I feel like the bigger the piece of paper, the better my ideas are. Right. Do you have any other ideas like that that might be able to help everyone? Um, for sure. I would definitely say um, be protective of your work environment. Um, and your creative environment, obviously, uh, because I consider them one and the same almost regardless of the work that uh, we all do. Um, your environment that you work and create in is key. I think the people that you choose to associate with, the reading that you choose to do or not do, um, also will help with the creative thoughts. And uh, I, th I think they're some of the most important things. And then make appointments with yourself. Um, as I mentioned in the webinar, uh, make sure that you are slotting in time and, and focus on um, what you want to create. Um, I think the other thing is, is um, I think I alluded to it in the webinar as well, is, is take stock of your progress. That's something that a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs feel they don't have time to do, but I can tell you it will change your state of mind very, very quickly when you see all that you have accomplished um, with the ideas that you implemented maybe six months ago or, or a year ago, or the things that you learned six months ago or a year ago, and how you're implementing them now, and what's different about your situation and how you're moving forward. So really it's, it's uh, um, I would say that's one of the biggest things that that I do uh, in my work. And I have been an entrepreneur for close to 30 years. Um, I'm very conscious uh, of the people that I choose to be in my inner circle. Um, I highly recommend mastermind groups. I work with mentors and coaches myself, and I am one. Um, I read material and listen to material that feeds my brain and my thinking capability and my creative uh, capability. Um, and uh, I, I create a, a very balanced life that works for me. So again, you can't put yourself in, the box, in a box, but those are some of the things you have to think about and you have to do your homework. You have to really you know, talk to yourself from that perspective, what matters to me. Um, not just what, how does it work for one person, whether it's you know, as you say, whether you're working out and you're doing your brainstorming, whether you're journaling, uh, whether you're walking in nature, whether it's in, you know, in your car driving to, you know, an out-of-town appointment. Um, there, there are lots of really great opportunities for us to uh, tap into that creativity and, and uh, take technology that really uh, supports that too. Great. Um, my next question is when you were talking about actually uh, sorting through your ideas and figuring and prioritizing them. Mm -hmm. um, the first step was actually to cross the ones that you know right away don't fit. Right. Do you have any techniques or any ways to help people realize which ones really don't fit? There are, there are so many different scenarios. There are probably a few questions that I could suggest um, but again, it, go, it comes down to what the ripple effect of that particular um, solution might be. Um, questions like, uh, would that work? How does that work? 
um, you'd have to brainstorm about that particular concept or idea. Uh, also taking into consideration time and costs, anything you might have to learn. Um, again, I mentioned that in the webinar. Um, so it really is dependent upon the particular um, idea or concept that you're developing. Ask questions to yourself around that, what would work and what wouldn't work. And again, do the pros and cons list um, based on the priorities that are first most immediate to you um, as far as meeting your needs. And then I, again, perhaps do that uh, for the ripple effect um, for a three to six month out if you really want to test an idea beyond that. Okay, great. Does that help? Yeah, that's wonderful. So I, I'm about to just end the recording, but uh, before I do, I just wanted to kind of leave a final thought with everyone on the phone. If you are hesitant on being creative, one of the most interesting thing that's ever has happened to me is I lived in China for about six months, and when I lived there, I was actually getting my MBA, and I was working with mainland China students. So they had never left the country, and they had always been in the Chinese um, training system or learning system. Um, and what was really interesting is that we had to brainstorm, and they had never been taught how to brainstorm before. They had never been thought that they had, they never had been taught to be creative. And so I taught them the basic principles of brainstorming, the rules that you're not allowed to interrupt each other, and you're writing everything down on this big board, and they all did it. And after about half an hour, we had a great idea, and you should have seen the smiles on all their faces. So I think that anyone can do it, even the if you've never been in an atmosphere to do it before, it is possible, it is there, and it should be a lot of fun. And I just thought that was a great learning for me because I got to see it happen. That's, that's a great comment, Carla, for sure. Um, and when you think about uh, the, the great work that gets done in the best mastermind um, groups, um, that, that is the premise as far as um, listening intently and non-judgmentally to others to support creativity in that kind of environment. It can, it can be and is very, very amazing when you experience it. Well, great. So I am going to stop the recording now, and I 